Claudio Arau has been playing the piano to great international acclaim for almost 80 years. From Tokyo, to Berlin, to Paris, to London, to New York, he has won the love and admiration of music lovers around the world. The two other famous pianists of his generation are Rudolf Serkin and Vladimir Horowitz. But only Claudio Arau continues to maintain an active concert schedule worldwide. And he has built his career largely without the help of hype or hysteria. The late Dean of English Music Critics, Sir Neville Cardus, wrote, quote, No living pianist surpasses Arau's comprehensive style, flexible enough to accommodate musical extremes, from Chopin to Bach, Schumann to Mozart, Beethoven and Brahms to Liszt. End of quote. Arau's repertoire is larger than that of any other living pianist, and it is committed to memory. He is the complete pianist, going beyond playing the instrument, taking us into the mind of the composer. He is never the keyboard virtuoso, delighting in flash and superficial brilliance. Rather, he is the medium through whom the composer speaks. Claudio Arau is a last living link to our 19th century musical heritage. Small wonder, then, that he is known universally as the Emperor. Although he has performed everywhere in the world except China, there is one country that is especially dear to Arau's heart and that is his native Chile. His triumphant return to Chile in 1984, after an absence of 17 years, was an event of national importance, ranking with Franz Liszt's return to Hungary or Paderewski's homecoming to Poland. In this program, we'll join Maestro Arau as he returns to the land of his birth. And we'll also go back and trace the events in the life of this extraordinary artist. And finally, we'll hear Maestro Arau perform his signature work, Beethoven's Piano Concerto No. 5 in E-flat major, The Emperor Concerto. Arriving at the airport in Santiago, Chile, Arau and his wife are greeted by a crowd of wildly enthusiastic fans. I asked Edward Schumacher, who covered the story for the New York Times, if there was a feeling of a hero returning home. Oh, the whole country was just crazy with that feeling. Hmm. It was, uh, um, the expectations before he came were so great that the leading newspaper there, El Mercurio, ran a front page photo of the arrival of the piano, if you can believe it. The men out there at the airport greeting the piano were dressed in white as if it were some, sign of, some kind of surgical operation. And, you know, they were all handling it like a little baby coming in. The expectation was amazing. The, the, the attitude of people waiting for their national hero to come home um, was very prevalent. Arau is greeted at the airport by a student from the music conservatory whose moving speech was captured by television cameras and reporters from all over Chile. Maestro Don Claudio, our happiness is immense. It's a great pleasure to have you here with your support and your interest. We want to develop closer ties. We want you to know us, and we want to know you better. We are your grandchildren. The tickets to Arau's concerts sold out in two hours, a month ahead of time, with some fans waiting in line overnight, hoping to see and hear the legendary Claudio Arau. There was a curfew, so it was, it was in fact, against the law for them being out there. But the police, instead of running them off, understood what a row meant to Chileans, that they let, the police let them stay there, and some police stayed and guard, guarded those who lined up all night uh, to get the tickets. And the tickets, for the most part, went on a first-come, first-served basis. So you had all kinds of people in there. I've been here since 11 o'clock last night. I've been here since 8 o'clock, but my husband was here since 5 in the morning with his friends. His presence here in Santiago makes us proud to be Chileans.
The Chileans have always loved culture. You can see it in the grand theaters and opera houses of Santiago and in the splendor of the architecture of Santiago's Metropolitan Cathedral. Chile is a land of contrasts. And Arau himself has some of these contrasts in his blood. He was born on February 6, 1903, into an aristocratic family in a small provincial town, Chian. His father, of French and Basque ancestry, was a prominent medical surgeon who was killed in a horseback riding accident when Claudio was one year old. His mother, whose family came from Spain, raised young Claudio and his older brother and sister by supporting the family with her work as a piano teacher. By the age of two, Claudio could distinguish the music of Beethoven from that of other composers, and he had learned to notate music before he could read or write. Here today, in his hometown of Chian, the entire population is in the streets to greet him. The citizens of Chian have named a street after their most distinguished citizen. It is one of ten such streets in Chile. Beautiful flowers and fruit trees surrounded the family's house in Chian. Arau remembers playing underneath this orange tree while he was still a small boy. His sister, Kecha, was his constant childhood companion. Every morning when he got up, he went out to the garden to see all the beautiful flowers. He wore an apron with a little buttonhole, and every day he had us make a corsage of his favorite flowers, which we would put into the buttonhole of his lapel. From the moment Claudio Arau's talent was discovered, his mother devoted her life to his career. She lived until four weeks before her 100th birthday, and she saw her son succeed all over the world. In Chile, she was hailed as the mother of a national hero. One of the things that struck Chileans, it was, the, was that when Arau came back, here's this man of tremendous world stature, and he comes back, and the few people he still knows in Chile from his childhood are some very old people, and some I remember coming to visit him at the hotel. And they were very ordinary people. They were family people, you know, friends from his youth, from his family. His earliest admirers fondly remember the young Claudio as the boy dearest to every girl's heart. He was a handsome, as much as you can imagine, with a culture uh, impossible to describe. And uh, all the young ladies of this time we are in love of Claudio. When he play Brahms, I feel this a glowing light of heaven. I was very ill in bed, very ill. And the doctor told me, you can't go to arouse concerts. I will go, I said. Well, I dressed as I could, and I went to the theater. I said, well, it would be so wonderful to die here listening to this, because <laughs> it, it was something unforgettable. The day after his arrival in Chile, Claudio Arau begins rehearsals for his Santiago concerts, which are scheduled to take place in the Teatro Municipal, built in 1857, some 35 years before New York's Carnegie Hall was dedicated. In the Teatro Municipal, with Juan Pablo Izquierdo conducting the Philharmonic Orchestra of Santiago, Arau is scheduled to play for a paying public. But Arau
Rao also wishes to play for those Chileans born since his last visit there 17 years earlier. And so he has scheduled an open rehearsal and a free concert in the cavernous Metropolitan Cathedral, the only public space large enough to hold the thousands of young people, students, and their families who cannot afford to pay for tickets. In the cathedral, Arau is rehearsing with conductor Victor Teva and the symphony orchestra of the University of Chile. For his concerts, Maestro Arau has chosen music with which he has been identified during his entire extraordinary career. Works by Beethoven, Brahms, Liszt, Chopin, Schubert, and Debussy. But the centerpiece will be Beethoven's Emperor Piano Concerto, which he has played hundreds of times with orchestras everywhere in the world. What happened in the rehearsals? Was there some kind of special sense, a feeling, that here was a, a grand master, in a sense, transmitting all that he had experienced in the lifetime of music making, transmitting it to the younger players in the orchestra? The maestro would stop at different points and go over and talk to the conductor. And as you're sitting there watching, you're saying, history is being passed on at this moment. Traditions being passed on. Not only does Arau know every note of the piano part, every concerto he plays, he also knows every note of every instrument in the orchestra. Arau takes the opportunity to show this orchestra how to play correctly some rhythms that are commonly misplayed in the opening of the last movement of the Emperor Concerto. Cuando tenemos ti a ti, ti a ti, la misma cosa, le ponemos el punto a la segunda, a la segunda semicorchea. También, también va ahí. It's really fantastic. Yesterday he made some fantastic corrections. The whole orchestra learned so much from him. It's like learning directly from the composer. It's like he was the composer at that moment. It's not technical. Everything he does is at the service of the music. It's really marvelous. Beethoven's music was already in Arau's repertoire at his debut concert in Xi'an when he was five years old. A noted Chilean critic wrote, I feel as if my heart were singing. As this child performs his marvels on the piano, I think I hear a mysterious voice whispering in my ear, telling me that Claudio Arau is one of those beings whom nature has favored with an overabundance of gifts, and the world will bow down before him like a god. On his return to his homeland, the 81-year-old Claudio Arau is fulfilling his dream to go back to the site of his debut 76 years earlier. Today, a gymnasium stands where that concert hall stood. Kecha, his sister, studied piano herself, and she assisted the small boy at his first recital on this very site.
I remember that I had to lead him on stage and lift him up onto the piano stool. His legs were so short they couldn't even reach the pedals. So we had these special stilts made. He would slip his feet in the straps, and this way, when he pushed down, he could reach the pedals. And of course, I had to stand right in back of him so he wouldn't fall off the stool. Two years later, at the age of seven, he had performed in both Santiago and Buenos Aires. President Pedro Montt heard Claudio Arau play, and he was so impressed that he asked the Chilean Congress to hear him as well. They agreed to underwrite his further musical studies, and Claudio and his family were sent to Berlin on a 10-year grant. And there, we met the wife of a general who was taking piano lessons with a professor Luch, a Russian. And Claudio began to study with him. I remember the professor was not very interested in teaching. And when Claudio would begin his lesson, the professor would fall asleep in his chair. And then he met Martin Krause and began to take lessons from him at the conservatory. That's when his musical life really began. As a child, Arau deeply felt the absence of a father. Now, master teacher Martin Krause became the father figure in his life. Krause had studied with Franz Liszt, and Liszt was a pupil of Karl Czerny, who had studied with Beethoven. With this direct connection to Beethoven, Arau remains unique in our time. He passes on the lessons of the 19th century to the young pianists who will be the artists of the 21st century. When I met him, I was so overcome with emotions that I kissed him on the cheek, and his skin was so soft. He was so sentimental and sincere. Do you think you could become another Claudio Rao? Yes, of course. I did well in all my exams and in the last piano competition. Sure I could. Arau has made time to give a master class for young Chilean pianists, and they greet him with a traditional Chilean sign of affection. <laughs> he has accepted no fee for his classes or his concerts in Chile. Instead, he has donated his earnings to a fund for the development of Chilean musicians. I had a wonderful training in, uh, as a young man and uh, as a child prodigy actually mm, that the univer universality whether it was the thing that uh, Martin Krause wanted to develop in, the, in his students, to be able to become Beethoven and become Liszt, become Chopin, mm. when, when you played it. Yes, you in fact feel that on the stage. When you're playing these great works, you pierce into the core of the composer. Absolutely, or at least, I mean, it might not always work, but, but uh, it's the, the, the goal that one should have. His protege, William Melton, best exemplifies Arau's principles of technique and repertoire.
bravo. Wonderful performance. Well, I've heard, as you know, many, many, many of Claudio's concerts traveling with him. Every concert is different. I can hear the Emperor Concerto five times in the same week, and they're all different. They're all incredibly wonderfully, but all different. And he has this approach of each concert is really a new, a new event for him. It's not, it never becomes something uh, tired or stale. Or, and he really does uh, achieve this. Mm. It never should, should become routine, you see. And yet, how do you prevent it from becoming routine? By, um, by watching myself. And, and uh, in, in case I, I feel some little bit the smallest um, detail in my playing, uh, which which sounds like routine, I drop the, the work for sometimes for years until I can get, approach it in a fresh way. What do you walk into a concert hall or an opera house for the premiere of a piece? Mm -hmm. What what do you bring with you to that performance? Nothing. I openness. Totally open minded. Openness. The, that's the only way of trying to understand it gradually. In 1918, at age 15, Arau was already famous throughout Europe, playing for royalty and the intellectual elite, all under the watchful eye of Martin Krauser. He played for the Queen of Romania, who was so moved by the young boy's performance that she removed a diamond brooch and spontaneously gave it to him. Then, at the moment when Arau needed him most, Martin Krause suddenly died. The effect on the young man was devastating. Well, at first I was uh, very desolate and very sad, and I thought it was the end of everything. I didn't want another teacher. I said, what, what I don't know, I will have to struggle for myself. I had made already a career as a, as a child prodigy, you see, all, all over Europe. And uh, then came the moment where they said, it, it, it isn't as, uh, as much as we thought. And I don't, it's not uh, what we expected. Uh, they, and uh, this decided that, it was the, uh, that I had gone through the same kind of getting stuck of, of other child prodigies. But it was, of course, it was too early. I was left alone, and, I, and uh, left those three, four or five years were very difficult. Although he won the List Prize in 1919, these were unhappy years for the young man. His first American tour in 1923 was unsuccessful. A manager had brought him to New York under false pretenses. Twenty promised concerts, turned out to be only two. And Arau and his mother ended up penniless in a New York boarding house. After the Baldwin Piano Company paid their way back to Berlin, the family found itself in even worse circumstances. Germany was racked by inflation. Arau was expected to support not only himself and his mother, but his sister and aunt as well. He was forced to sell the jewels and decorations that had been presented to him during his years as a child prodigy. These years of struggle strengthened his empathy for the music of Ludwig van Beethoven. Arau identifies profoundly with the meaning of Beethoven's music. His message, which is struggle and victory, like no other composer. And I think that that is also why the young people all over the world, they just want to get this message, because they live in a, in a desperate world, so to speak. All, ex except a few of his works, but in general, they always 
the describe an inner struggle and always at the end they how could one say that they they win and like beethoven arau eventually triumphed over adversity soon after krause died arau met dr hubert abrahamson a psychiatrist who would be his friend for nearly half a century and in arau's own words part guru part father and part older brother he was abrahamson's devoted patient and abrahamson often stood backstage during arau's concerts providing moral and psychological support i started at that age at 17 or 18 suddenly i couldn't do certain things and there was absolutely no reason for it because i, I my fingers were much better than than that but uh, and so i started think, thinking about it and finally with the help of um, of abrahamson we discovered that there was a desire to fail so that i wouldn't have to live up to the expectations also through him and, and, and that i was trying to please the audience which is a very bad thing if you are not out to please and to get more applause the real thing comes out one of the few happy experiences during this period in Arau's life was his return to Chile in 1921. The response of the people to the pianist's playing was so overwhelming that they freed the workhorses from their duties and pulled Arau's carriage through the streets of Santiago. 63 years later, the response is just as overwhelming. Arau has been the subject of a total of 787 articles in the Chilean press, all of them enthusiastic. Fourteen editorials have been devoted to his return. The caption for this cartoon reads, Why can't I sleep in this bed? Because Claudio Arau slept here. I never knew that a concert pianist could be treated like a rock star. Or particularly, a concert pianist is more than 80 years old. <laughs> He wanted it known that he was making no political statement, for he esteems art above politics. Music, if it is great, brings people together, he told Edward Schumacher. But everyone sort of put the political differences aside. Oftentimes, these people in a situation like Chile, they come from the same schools, from the same families, the same classes, and they have differences of opinion on what's best for the country, but they share the same opinions on they love their country and they love this music. Although he holds both American and Chilean citizenship, Claudio Arau has always considered himself a citizen of the world. His appearance in Chile has helped to bring the country closer together. Members of the government as well as of the opposition are sitting side by side in anticipation of Maestro Arau's performance. President Pinochet, who did not attend any of the other concerts, has made an appearance at this last performance, while an offstage band plays the Chilean national anthem. In Latin America, you know, art and politics are always very mixed. But he was very good at not trying to take sides, uh, of identifying himself as being right or left, but just identifying himself as being a Democrat. Democrat with a small d. Democrat with a small d. <laughs> he wanted to make the strong point that he did not come to Chile to make any kind of a political statement. That he came because he felt he was getting old and he wanted to make at least one last trip back to his own country and be with his own people and especially have some interchange with the young people of Chile. In the wake of his visit to Chile, 3,200 children signed up for piano lessons at music schools and conservatories. Of course, as you know, I don't, I don't teach anymore. But um, if you want to 
call it my musical wisdom. <laughs> Let's call it that. It's such a I thing, yes. I can't think of a better way to describe it. <laughs> um, I want to, to give it a gig and go on giving it to some young people that I find uh, worthwhile. Of course, when I'm absolutely sure that it that it there is something special there. This young student was the winner of the first Claudio Arau piano competition. Arau feels that too often young pianists put technique above interpretation. It's always the chasing for success and pleasing and but it's never just to to perform in a way that you project the meaning of the music. And so m many of the young people are sidetracked to doing things, for instance, playing faster to get more applause. The British music critic Neville Cardus once wrote, quote, Arau knows the secret whereby interpretation by an artist goes beyond personal reaction, aesthetic or other. He is blessed by the gift of selfless involvement, the gift whereby rare and individual musical understanding and masterful technique can serve as a sort of entranced medium through which the poet-composer speaks. It was completely unimportant that I had more success than anybody else or something. And, uh, uh, but that it, that it, the only thing that mattered was to come close to the innermost meaning of the music. The turning point in Arau's European career came in 1924, when he played the complete well-tempered clavier of Bach in both London and Vienna. And already, he began to receive those accolades which he receives to this day for his special insights into the music. We look back now on more than half a century of extraordinary and brilliant achievements since the emergence of Claudio Arau as a world-class pianist in the 1920s. In 1935, for example, he presented the entire keyboard works of Bach in 12 Berlin concerts, a feat that has never been duplicated. By this time, he had also begun to record regularly. He has now made more long-playing albums than any other pianist, and the list grows longer year by year. He has recorded the 32 piano sonatas of Beethoven and the composer's five piano concertos, all the Mozart piano sonatas, the major works of Brahms, Schumann, Chopin, Liszt, and Debussy. Some of these works he has recorded four and five times. These recordings are a legacy that generations not yet born will cherish. The same is true of his edition of the Beethoven piano sonatas with his recommended fingerings, phrasings, and dynamic markings. In 1940, with Europe on the brink of war, Claudio Arau left Berlin and he came to the United States. This time, he met with spectacular success. After his first concert as a New York resident, the New York Times wrote, Claudio Arau, the Chilean pianist, enthralled the audience with a series of performances that could hardly be excelled for imaginative detail, wealth of exquisite color effects, and technical virtuosity. By the 50s, he was playing as many as 130 concerts a year all over the world and he has maintained an active concert schedule to this day. Arau's entire career has been the product of artistry dedicated to the service of music. One of the things that impressed me, and I say this as a reporter, is that Arau doesn't seek out the media. He's a very low-keyed man dedicated to his music. He's a very humble man when you first meet him. Very kind man. Um, he in no way plays up to you and in no way tries to to push any kind of a point of view 
about himself or about politics or about anything. He is totally dedicated to his music. He is the kind of man that rarely exists anymore. And you come away from talking to someone like Claudio Rao feeling as if you've really been in the presence of a great man. Claudio Arau lives quietly in New York, where he has resided for the last 40 years. In 1937, he married Ruth Schneider, an aspiring mezzo-soprano who was known, according to Arau, as the prettiest woman in Frankfurt. They have three children, Carmen, Mario, and Christopher. Arau is a deeply cultured man, immersed in philosophy, literature, and art. At home, he is surrounded by his books and his music. and better than anybody else, it very often turns around and you, you, you do the, your worst performances. When you... Well, it's another thing that, that has to be fought against all one's life, up to the last moment of your life, because is the, the, the vanity. Vanity, vanity is the most terrible, the most blocking things for, for an interpreter. If you are sure that what you have to say is, uh, is unique, then you are not, not out to please or not to please or, or, or to impress or not to impress. You have your message and that's it. When he's there at the end of this first concert, there's 12 minutes of standing ovation. And he's standing up. And he puts his hand over his heart and he bows his head. And you see it's a genuine, humble emotion. And there are tears in his eyes. Claudio Rao's come home. In a moment, we'll have the performance that evoked this phenomenal response. Earlier this evening, in a police-escorted motorcade, Claudio Arau arrived here at the Metropolitan Cathedral. The surrounding streets have been closed. Inside the cathedral, more than 5,000 young people and their families have been waiting for hours for the concert to begin. While in the square outside, in the rain, Another 6,000 are waiting to listen to the performance on loudspeakers that have been placed in strategic locations to afford the best possible outdoor sound. London music critic Joan Chisel once described Claudio Arau's performance of Beethoven's Emperor Concerto in these words, quote, Arau's Emperor is one of the four or five concertos in which he is emperor and king combined, end quote. And Sir Neville Cardis wrote, quote, of all pianists today, none surpasses Arau's treatment of the great octave passages of the opening movement. He controls the dynamic energy superbly, imaginatively as well as thoughtfully, calculating the diminuendo and pianissimo shadings so that we are touched by a sense of awe at those fallings away and finishings of sound, which are symbols of Beethoven's spiritual manifestations and presence." End quote. Beethoven composed his Emperor Piano Concerto in Vienna, 
during the years 1809 and 1810, when the conquering forces of Napoleon's army were occupying the city. Given the circumstances, one might have expected that Beethoven would compose a somber, despairing work. Instead, he created a radiant, joyous, and extroverted concerto that boldly proclaims the invincibility of the individual human spirit. At the concerto's premiere, one of the French soldiers in attendance is supposed to have cried out, C'est l'Empereur, it is the Emperor. The nickname has stuck because it is so appropriate. Here, in the magnificent Metropolitan Cathedral in Santiago, Chile, is Claudio Arau. To perform Beethoven's Piano Concerto No. 5 in E-flat major, the Emperor Concerto, with Victor Teva conducting the Symphony Orchestra of the University of Chile. Claudio Arau, the Emperor.
Beethoven's Piano Concerto No. 5 in E-flat major, the Emperor Concerto, has been performed in the Metropolitan Cathedral in Santiago, Chile, by the Emperor, pianist Claudio Arau, with Victor Teva conducting the Symphony Orchestra of the University of Chile. This extraordinary performance, a free concert for young people, was played before an audience of 5,000 gathered inside the cathedral. And another 6,000 people have been standing in the rain, listening on the special speakers that have been placed in the square outside. This remarkable demonstration of affection for Claudio Arau, the man and the musician, is especially dear to him because it comes largely from a generation of Chileans who have not previously had the opportunity to hear him play live. And this same outpouring of affection and reverence follows Claudio Arau wherever he plays and whatever he plays. His audiences honor the emperor.